Good morning, Colorado Springs, and welcome to another Brighter Day in the Neighborhood. I'm your host, Angela Jones of Brighter Day Law, and today we have a very special guest with us, um, my personal assistant, Emily Burris. Welcome, <laughs> Emily. Hey, Angela. So happy to be here. Yeah, I know you're like on the, you're on the front line today because you're actually, um, uh, always behind the scenes, putting the helping put this that together. Is, that is fair, yes. Yeah. So You're it's right. nice to be in the hot seat. <laughs> right. Well, or well, you're you're fine with me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know it can be a little bit nerve wracking um, when you get thrust out front. Yes, but fine in a good way. Yeah. So you um, have been um, working with us at Brighter Day Law now for what? Since Two September months? 1st, yeah. Okay. Time flies when you're having fun. I know, I know. It seems like for it seems like forever in like in, in the best ways. And so, I mean, as you're aware, because you've organized this for a couple different people, we like to spotlight um, those of us at Brighter Day Law so that people can get to know who we are and what we're all about. Um, I know you provided me with a little bio, um, um, and I think I'm just hot looking over this and and highlighting this, I mean, I know you were born and raised in Tennessee, and you mm-hmm. like to get back to Nashville. Who doesn't? <laughs> Just came from the there this week. Best food ever, <laughs> right? Well, so where um, where in Nashville uh, do you like to go for food? What are your favorites? Man, there are so many good ones. Um, Hattie B's hot chicken, of course. honestly. Yeah. And then, um, so my family's in Hendersonville. It's about 20 minutes outside of Nashville. And there are a couple of places just growing up that our family always went. So love going to those. One of them, um, it's like a cute house that's been redone. Total chick food, but great Southern food. And it's called the Chocolate Covered Strawberry. Okay. So my mom and I, that was like our spot huh. that we always went to. I've never been there. How long has that been there? It's been there probably... Probably just under 10 years, but it's been a, a while, yeah. That's, like, brand new. <laughs> you're like, yeah, and you're – so once you move away, it's hard to keep track of, like, when did this go up? What happened? Yes. Yeah, so you ever go to Demos's up there? Oh, my goodness, yes. The so best that, sick food ever. ever. It's such comfort food. It really is. And, okay, so, like, I, I'm telling you. So um, when I was sick, the first mm-hmm. time I ever had Demos's, um, Wendy Rutherford, who is one of our contract attorneys and mm-hmm. – um, She went, I had hurt my back. I was exercising and hurt my back. Um, And so I had to be laid up. And she was like, I'm going to bring you a meal, of course, because in the South, that's what you do. (laughs) (laughs) Let me comfort you. (laughs) Absolutely. And so um, she just went by and um, I don't, I think the main, like the main was like, you know, grilled chicken or something Mm -hmm. like your half chicken, something like that. But she got me the side of spaghetti with meat sauce. That spaghetti with me. I, I literally have traveled to Nashville, <laughs> and and now actually Demos is downtown is closed down, so the only one still open mm-hmm. is in Hendersonville, um, in Murfreesboro. I don't Murfreesboro. Yeah. Is, it, is it open again? Mm-hmm. I went when I was there last. <laughs> oh, it wasn't open the last time I was it wasn't. there. Okay. Well, I was actually just there this past weekend, but only for like a day and a half, mm-hmm. and I didn't go to, but I mean, like the last time we were there, and when I took the firm there oh, um, this it. summer, it only the one in Hendersonville was open. Okay. So, but now it's good that Murfreesboro is back open. It is really it is good. so good. So every time I'm like, a, like a minor cough, anything, like I'm feeling under the weather, their soup, their chicken and wild chicken rice, and, rice. Mm-hmm. and their bread is mm-hmm. so good. Like you can't beat it. Have you ever had the brown butter spaghetti? My parents try to remake it. They like it so much. They were, my dad was like, what is brown butter and why does it taste like this? <laughs> right, right. He's like, you're going to get like thick, dad, if you keep eating this like a couple of times a week like you are. But, no, yeah, it is so, awesome. So I, I love Demos's. So that's that's my favorite thing about Hendersonville. <laughs> <laughs> Forget the lake or the people, the Whatever. food. Whatever. It's true. Honestly, yeah. yeah. could talk about food all day long. <laughs> um, well, what about your, um, and when did you come to Colorado Springs? So I moved to Colorado Springs originally um, in, I think it was 2018, and um, the Lord had really placed on my heart this certain ministry here, and so had given me kind of crazy a dream about it, and I was just like, no, like, that's wild, and he just would not stop talking to me about it, and so I was like, finally, you know, whatever, I'll apply for this non-paid intern position was what he was telling me. And I was like, at the time I'm 27, um, about to be 28. I was like, no way am I doing a non-paid internship. I've had a salary paid position since I graduated college. Like I'm, you know, I'm in a business track. I make good money. Like I'm not doing it. And Mm -hmm. I just remember he kept being like, just be obedient, just, you know, just apply. And so I 
was kind of rebellious in my application and I put things in it that I thought they would kind of be like, oh, she doesn't take this seriously at all. Well, come to find out, um, now one of my friends uh-huh. was the person that was over the program at the time. And they're like, she's hilarious. We want her for two terms. <laughs> so it totally backfired. I got hired on the spot and um, moved here shortly after. Oh, that's so funny. So, what's that? What's that ministry? It's John and Lisa Bevere's ministry. It's called uh, Messenger okay. International. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. And and I think John and Lisa Bevere have gone back to Nashville or moved to Nashville. I know we did a weird swap. So I came okay. from Nashville to here. Uh-huh. Worked for them for a while. Um, ended up working for university in between. Mm-hmm. Still very connected with them. But yeah, they just this year, um, all of the four sons, apart from one, um, from one, have mm-hmm. all moved with them to Nashville. So it's kind of crazy. We did a reverse. Yeah, like I move here, they move there. So, yeah, so that's very interesting. And, you know, mm-hmm. that's like, you know, in terms of our firm, that's where we've got sort of a, you know, we're moving in the direction of opening a sister firm yes. in Nashville. And, you know, we have those roots in Nashville too. We do. Went to Lucky University us. of Tennessee mm-hmm. and lived in Nashville. Roll tide though. Yeah, <laughs> right. No. <laughs> I have forgotten that about We agree about so many things. That's <laughs> just one we can't agree on. That's okay. I mean, Whatever. Talk to David. <laughs> Talk to our national championships. Oh my gosh! And and you know, I'm going to go into a Broncos game. Um, you know this this weekend, even though it's going to be freezing, because you know I get being a diehard fan. Yes, <laughs> uh, through the ups and downs, mostly downs. But <laughs> well, you know, it, it's there's seasons. There's seasons of everything. Right. Any given Sunday, everyone just says, "Oh, it's a building season." I was like, "That's been like 20 years you've been building." <laughs> I mean, there's going to come a time when when something's going to come to roost for Alabama. I don't know if that'll happen in my <laughs> lifetime, but just praying for it. That's that's <laughs> my prayer. That's my starter prayer every. I don't know. Saturday. They look like Jesus' favorite team. I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't know. I'd like to see the blood roll on that one. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Different kind of roll die. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, some people would think they may have made a pact with the devil. I, I, now, I'm not saying that. Oh. I'm just oh, saying. Those are some fighting words. <laughs> Well, I've heard it said about, you know, certain NFL players as well, but whatever. All right. All right. God bless. <laughs> Probably just jealousy. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> um, okay. So um, you moved to Colorado Springs and you've been here since 2008. Mm-hmm. And so well, obviously your time with Messenger International, mm-hmm. you finished your internship and then? So I was hired before the end of my second term internship. Um, mm-hmm. And it was kind of a crazy turn of events how all of that went down. Um, they had actually talked to me about having like a full-time role before I took the internship and it fell through and it was crazy because the Lord was like, no, you're going to be, you know, on staff here. And I was like, what, what was that? You know, that was (laughs) rude. And they hired someone who was 18. And at the time I was 20, 28. Mm. And so I remember the Lord saying like, I want you to serve and like, you know, do things for her behind the scenes. Basically I, you know, helped her with the job and, you know, no one really saw that. And God was like within, you know, this, this time, like you'll be hired on. And so, I was like, okay, I want to, you know, have, be doing this for the right reasons. And I want to have, you know, um, a heart that really is just after the Lord and being obedient. And honestly, I learned and was taught so much in that season. And God just did moved so much in my life and I would do it again. It's one of those things like during it, you're like, get me out of this. What are you doing? And then you look back and you're like, oh, that was such a precious season. Um, And so, yeah, just the way God like showed up, provided the lessons I learned during that time, it was priceless. So it meant a lot. Well, and I think it's funny. It's very Southernism to refer to something that God does as rude, but whatever. <laughs> it was rude. I was like, it happened. And even the, the boss, he was like, honestly, if you don't want to do the internship after this happened and fell through, like, I get it. And, you know, he was like, I so, have, have a lot of respect for you taking it after the fact. Like, can you lower yourself and humble yourself to serve now? So, right, right. Yeah. And so now you're, um, well, you've taken this, the job with us yes. here, which I really appreciate. Um, and it's, you know, kind of a three quarters role because you're mm-hmm. studying to become a realtor. Yes. Yeah. And how's that going? It is going. It's one of those <laughs> things that, um, man, I, I always had heard like, oh, this is tough. Um, and I mean, testing is not like anyone, well, maybe some people's favorite thing. Mm-hmm. It's not my favorite mm-hmm. thing. Um, and I, I'm an okay test taker, but it is tedious and it takes a while. And so carving up that time and just making sure that you're staying after it, after, you know, so, so many months, you're like, okay, I gotta, gotta keep after this or done with work, gotta go mm-hmm. take a test or the weekend, like gotta fit a couple of these in. So, um, yeah, it's, 
it's going, but it's slower than I would like. <laughs> well, and what a lot of people don't realize is you're actually, it's an exception um, to the requirement to have a law license to practice law. And yeah. so you're actually learning to practice law in this respect. I mean, you're advising mm -hmm. and people about contracts, writing up contracts and, you know, and then assisting them in fulfilling those. And so there's, sure. there's actually a lot to know a lot that can get mixed, messed up, mixed up. There sure is. And then the whole personal aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then most people are self-employed when they're a realtor. So there's a lot to it. There's it's, a lot of moving parts that you don't recognize. Where you're like, mm -hmm. I can show up. I can, mm -hmm. you know, talk to people. I can sell a house. I love looking so, at houses. Why, yes. why shouldn't I be a realtor? I know the L Woods of real estate. No. Right, right. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Um, okay, so in, um, you know, just in your personal life, so you have a lot of friends and you guys do things together. Yes, yeah, so my roommate and I, I think we've shared some of this with you, but yeah, mm -hmm. we um, weekly have a small group in our house and it's kind of like under the umbrella of our church, um, like it's a, a small group mm -hmm. that's, you know, faith-based, but sometimes it's just, you know, oh, let's do a family dinner. And so we have between usually like 20 and 40 people in our house oh, wow. every Wednesday. Yeah. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of people to fit in our, yeah, our little four bedroom living room. So uh -huh. it's a ton of fun. Um, but I think, you know, people truly, I've lived, you know, here, I've lived in Tulsa, I've lived in Nashville. Um, but you, the older you get, the more you realize just people make a place. Like, you know, even if there's not a ton of things to do or whatever it is, like people can make or break somewhere. Like living in Oklahoma, I'm sorry, people that are from Oklahoma live in Oklahoma and love it, but it was just not my thing. But the people there made that season, mm -hmm. and it was so sweet. And looking back, I was like, oh, the community was the day and night difference and right, right. that being an enjoyable season and time of life where you can be in, like, you know, the most happening place on earth. You could live mm -hmm. in Disney World, but if you don't have a great community around you, it's going to be hard to to have that be, like, a long-term enjoyable place to be. So. Yeah, I think you're right. I think, you know, I mean, we're really made for relationship in mm -hmm. that, you know, one of the things when we were moving a lot with the military that I noticed is, you know, um, one time particularly stood out um, that um, we went to um, Kansas, Fort Leavenworth, and God we bless. had, I know, right? <laughs> um, Windmills it, for days. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That drive through Kansas here, especially from Tennessee. It's torture. It's the worst. Mm -hmm. But this is kind of eh, maybe an hour outside of Kansas City. Okay. Um, and... Um, but on the base itself, they had built some brand new housing. Mm -hmm. um, actually, the housing, the brand new housing was right next to the cemetery. And my husband <laughs> used to joke, it's great. The neighbors are quiet. <laughs> you know. They don't but, have much to say. <laughs> I know. But most of the housing that our class, because we went there for his CGSC, mm -hmm. um, and most of um, the people in our class, and, and even in, you know, just the community that I'd go to the gym with or play bunko with or, you know, what have you, um, we're not in the new housing because there mm -hmm. wasn't that much. And on our little cul-de-sac in the new housing was nice. I mean, there were, mm -hmm. you know, several people in there. But it wasn't, you know, the, we, they were big and, you know, really pretty self-contained. Like, if right. you didn't want to interact with your neighbors, you never had to. Right. You could just drive through the cul-de-sac, wave, and not worry about it. You know, <laughs> park in your garage. and Next just, to cemetery. <laughs> that's it, you know. But we had garages and everything and our mm -hmm. own little fenced yard in the back. And so you really didn't have to interact with neighbors. Sure. But everybody else, like especially in the super old stuff, like mm -hmm. there was, I mean, you had to park and you had to walk in and the porches were shared. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, especially when they were run down and they were kind of janky, nobody wanted to stay in. So they were always barbecuing outside together. Right. And they were just, and they bonded. Mm -hmm. And it was almost like that. The hardship of the living environment <laughs> made it. You're you in know. a crop hole too. Well, let's bond over some food. Yeah. Right. Right. And so and that's <laughs> that's really you know, and I think that's very interesting. It's like so you can live in a really nice place mm -hmm. and not cultivate the relationships right. and you know, kind of be lonely or isolated the whole entire time. Right. Really we sure we change yourself. Yeah. We we had both. You mm -hmm. know. So we were lucky. Um, but you know, or, you know, you can have not so great a place to live mm -hmm. and be around people who care about you and who are doing community with you. Right. That's and it really important. makes a humongous, humongous difference. And that's kind of like, even at the law firm, I think that's, you know, you know, people who come in and work with us, mm -hmm. they're kind of going through a yucky time. For sure. But 
you know, we try to be there as an extension of their community to be, you know, kind of doing life with mm-hmm. them at that time. And even dealing with, you know, you know, hundreds of cases where people are going through hard times and they're not always able to put their best foot forward. Right. Um, you know, we internally, you know, do that. Same. You're standing community. Yeah. Yeah. We're doing that same thing all the time. Mm-hmm. And so, um, does a great job of that. What's that? So that honestly, I've seen the firm do such a good job of that. Not only the team, which is where it starts, mm-hmm. because if there's disunity there, it's going to be felt through all the interactions right. with people, you know, be it the lawyers or, you know, the legal assistants or you know, paralegals. Um, but yeah, everyone, I feel like truly, really does love each other, get along really well. And it's so felt uh, in supporting one another. And then also the people that we interact with and are coming alongside them in some of the darkest hours of you know their life I love that you had gotten you know felt like Lord had given you brighter brighter days and I feel like it's such a fitting I didn't feel like it it's straight name. up happened that smack was, me in the face that's how that that's how that happened and yeah. we'll get into that story another time because this is about you um but yeah like it's important I mm-hmm. mean and you know you're absolutely a you know a perfect addition for the Thank time you. period that you're here I would of course keep you forever um but we'll see how <laughs> that <you>. goes <laughs> I know. um you're listening to um, KPPF. Um, this is A Brighter Day in the Neighborhood. I'm Angela Jones, and our special guest today is Emily Burris. Um, okay, so um, we've got the going over there. You talk about skiing and hiking. Now, where'd you mm-hmm. learn to ski growing up in Tennessee? It's a good question. My parents are like, listen, this is an, a, a, an expensive hobby, <laughs> and so before we take all of our hoodlum kids and like push them down a mountain in <laughs> Aspen, we're going to make sure that they know what they're doing. Right. So we, I don't know if you ever had been to Paoli Peaks in Indiana. It's all ice, everything. So I was like, this: if you're going to ski or make it or break it, you're going to know there because it's way harder than it is here, honestly. Really? Okay. But, yep, they gave us ski school. They're like, we're going to go have fun. Hopefully you learn how to ski. And then um, we honestly had the hookups. And I we didn't know anything about skiing besides Paoli Peaks. Mm-hmm. Or like, what's, you know, the nice place to go skiing? Or, you know, where's like the, right. you know, like here we're like, oh, Vail, Beaver Creek, Snowmass, Aspen. So, um, but we had no idea. Like it was just, it, it was what it was. We thought right. everywhere in Colorado was probably like this. Right. Um, but super fortunate. My dad's um, uncle, so my great uncle, mm-hmm. he had a ski in, ski out condo on Snowmass, which is in Aspen. And so okay. after we had a couple places or times at Paley Peaks in Indiana where they were like, okay, y'all don't totally suck. We uh-huh. can, we can go here as a family. So we started going, I think like every other year from the time I was in middle school. Oh wow! So we would come with our parents, friends and their kids were all our ages. And so we just group up. And if we do maybe one day in ski school, but then after that, we just spend the, the days hiking, right. hiking up and going down blacks as like these yeah. middle school kids, early high school I'm really lucky we didn't get hurt, but right, yeah, it was a ton right. of fun. So do you get all the, like the Epic Pass and the, Honestly, what's the other one? Everyone loves like it's Epic versus Icon. I yeah. think Epic is the way to go. In my opinion, I had the Epic Pass last year, but I had like the, it was only like a certain number of days mm. you can pick and I have not gotten it this year. I should have, yeah. I was like, I don't know how everything's going to play out with COVID because the year before I had gotten one and I didn't even live at the time I was in Tulsa yeah. and it was like for a certain number of days and they were like, oh, right. well, credit for your next season because you can't use it because all right. the mountains got right. closed down. So yeah. no, but I think Epic's it's, way to go. I mean, other than no snow November, you know, I think it's, it's going to be okay this I, year. I sure hope We've so. We've been out. We, well, so I say we, <laughs> I don't mean we as in me because I grew up in Florida and Tons I of skiing there. water <laughs> ski and sure. I don't even do that very well <laughs> you know so um but you know I always used to like like to tube or mm-hmm. hydroslide or go to the beach and right you know um that type of thing but n- no my kids I think uh got the epic pass mm-hmm. because we get the military discount it is the way to do deal. it yeah. And then Chloe was able to get my um, my youngest was able to get the icon also oh. from her school. So it was really? some kind of deal. So it was like I don't really know exactly what the deal is, but she's at Fort Collins. Well, some strings. And so no, I think it's just <laughs> like a student discount right. or something. Make me and, want to go back to school. <laughs> I know, right? Um, but yeah, so she gets like I think she's got pretty much, if not every. Um, every mountain mm-hmm. and every lift covered, she's got most. Girl got the hookups. She does. So, Love yeah, it. so we're going, we were in, um, I guess we went Thanksgiving weekend 
um, to the Vale. Yeah, right I mean, outside it was Vale, mm-hmm. and then I think we're going to I think Brock. Okay, this, this weekend. I love Breckenridge. Yeah, we've got this little thing where um, <laughs> it's kind of crazy. We bought this timeshare when the kids were little, and you it know you had a timeshare. <laughs> You're like the main, That's again the main of a my whole existence. other story. <laughs> my husband. Oh, thought, it all makes sense. Mm-hmm, <laughs> got us involved in this timeshare thing. But the great part about it is it's not the timeshare itself. That's mm-hmm. kind of a pain. Right. But what it has is a part of this timeshare situation mm-hmm. is you can get like bonus time or getaways. Sure. And so like for a week in a you know, studio at, mm-hmm. at Breckenridge, we can get that for like 400 bucks. So like, so that's one night. Right. If you go to a yeah. hotel, Anywhere right? Else. So Especially we'll, Breckenridge. so High we'll season. get them like on, get them to check in on like Saturday and mm-hmm. then you check out on Saturday. And then, so it's kind of, you know, it's blurring the lines. Over, right. <laughs> and so she'll go and, you know, she'll go and do the like, you know, go all day Saturday, check in, spend the night Sunday. Doesn't have to go back till school till Tuesday you know, is done, right, and then Danny will go and and kind of like, oh, I don't have work on Tuesday, so I'll go, you know, Tuesday, spend the night, Wednesday, come Mm -hmm. back, so they kind of split it up, and it's a sweet deal, kind of thing, Mm -hmm. and it's only a couple hours away, honestly, that, I think that and Keystone are the two, like, Mm -hmm. closest to us, Mm -hmm. so it's just so easy to hop over to those on the weekend. Yeah, Breck is, but, you know, Aspen was a lot, not Aspen, but Vail was further, Vale is a little bit further. My personal favorite, just because I grew up on it, mm-hmm. was Snowmass, but it's like four and a half hours to get there. I don't there. think I've been to Snowmass. It's worth it, in my opinion. Yeah, I have not. I haven't been out there, but I mean, we've been trying to do more staycations, like in terms mm-hmm. of inside Colorado. Right. And so that the list for like Steamboat and and Snowmass, and mm-hmm. we, we, we've been down to Durang, um, not Durango, but um, Telluride. Okay. That's cool. You, I've have you been, been to Telluride? Telluride? Mm-mm. Got to go to Telluride. Okay. I'll it is just list. a neat little town, and then Ure is right near there. Okay. If you like to do, like, hikes and, you know, do you do the 14ers? So, I love hikes, and I'm not afraid of, like, a hard hike. Um, the one I've probably done the most is the incline. I think I've done it eight or nine times. Mm-hmm. Um and it's, I mean, at least it's like over somewhat quickly. Yeah. I just don't know that I would enjoy, I really love hiking, but like for eight or nine hours, I'm not sure that I want to commit that much time to do it, mm. to be like, so I haven't done a 14 year. I I mean, it's on the list and I'm, I want to, yeah. but I'm like, I like the sweet, you know, like give me like a three, a four yeah. hour hike at most where we, right. you know, enjoy it or like something that's a challenge, but that doesn't right. take eight or nine hours. Cause that to me just seems like a lot can go wrong. I also had a friend that got stuck on the mountain um, and had to get like life flighted out wow. <laughs> doing, um, I think it was Pikes Peak. And so it was like one of the first friends I made when I moved here. Like the back side just, of Pikes Peak? Yes. And so they were like, it shut down. We didn't know how to get like down. Mm-hmm. It, it started snowing. You know, we had feet of snow. And so they had to life flight us out. Mm-hmm. So I think that stuck in my mind too, where it's like, I would so somehow manage to be that girl that got stuck in some kind of torrential downpour or something and no it was the fellow that had to fight some kind of mountain lion or something that kind of did it in for me for hiking <laughs> pike's peak right. like literally this i don't remember it's not worth that to me i don't me. remember if it was a mountain lion it was something it was some wild yeah. animal it was some wild cat like a lynx anyway or... <laughs> yeah like something <laughs> and the thing was coming you after him and he got into like basically a fist fight with this animal and he had to defend himself for like right. punching <laughs> the mountain lion. Like no one's gonna believe I mean, this. He's covered with scratches, and I don't even know. I don't. He might have had a shot. He might have shot him. I can't remember all the details. Mm-hmm. I just know I'm like, you know, bears, mountain lion. Is it worth your life? Maybe walking not. and spending the night outside. <laughs> you know, I love not camping personally. Glamping, <laughs> right? You know, as long as I'm not having to sleep outside on the ground. Sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I like my bed too. So. Yeah. So, but to this life flight situation, it's not exactly the same, but that's mm-hmm. basically <laughs> why I don't ski. Um, cause my, we were in Germany when my kids first mm-hmm. learned to ski and they have, you know, right. the, um, does, like WR walking. stuff. Right. And, and we went and I was on this little, um, bunny slope mm-hmm. you know, and I figured out I'm actually really good at skiing, mm-hmm. but I can't stop. 
Like, so I'm bad at stopping. That's problematic. That's hugely <laughs> problematic, especially because one of my our, our neighbors next door, she had been skiing like competitively. Mm-hmm. You know, like I don't even know. I don't know that she was in the Olympics, but it was like, you know really solid skier. Really solid skier, and she, we were the same age. And she um, skied over a mogul and got a spiral yeah. fracture to her leg and could you know like to her tibia mm-hmm. and couldn't walk. All, you know without assistance crutches something right. so if this surgeries, expert can't do that i'm kind of like it's enough you know, for me yeah. i know that's what i figured i was like you know i can definitely um hang out by the fire <laughs> enjoy some hot chocolate and, read exactly, a book enjoy all kind of things mm-hmm. but absolutely not going to do that but mm-hmm. we actually did a really cool hike um, um my sister and i did a really cool hike above dylan Okay, yeah, you and Kara hike a lot. Yeah, um, and, you know, the lake there mm-hmm. is really beautiful, but it was just above where the outlets are, and okay. it it only took us, like, two hours, so oh, if you're so out that way, all right. um, I'll get you the name Put of it. on my it. list. I can't remember. I can't remember the name of it. So, well, okay, uh, I think um, we have just a couple minutes, and so um, any, uh, I don't know, what's something <laughs> super interesting about you that I don't yet know that would Final be fun remarks. to share? Final remarks. Okay, let's see. A couple fun facts. Um, let's see. I used to have a lifted and loud Chevy pickup truck, which is my favorite vehicle I've owned to date. Really? Most people don't think they're like, you're just some bougie princess. That I'm mm-hmm. like, no, I'm really not. Oh. I was raised in Nashville, and yeah. I have this whole other um, so whole really side, I guess. Bougie princess. Yeah, I can shoot guns. I'm actually a pretty good shot. <laughs> um, my grandfather used to be Dolly Parton's dentist, so that's a fun what? fact when it's always like the two truths and the lie. Yeah. Um, I love Dolly Parton. I know. Who doesn't love Dolly? She's amazing. My sister named her dog. Um, she's actually about to have a child, but her mm-hmm. dog was like the first baby, grandbaby. Her name's Dolly. So, um, in honor, I'm trying to think of something. My best else. friend's sister's name is Dolly. It's so sweet. I know. I I'm think like, so. it's a, a darling name, super southern. Mm-hmm. So, those are a couple of fun facts. Well, that's super cool. <laughs> well, um, we appreciate you joining us here today and, you know, all the efforts that you go into making um, the brighter day in the neighborhood mm-hmm. what it is. I mean, for everything from, you know, coordinating with our guests and bringing all the mm-hmm. little gift bags and, um, you know, the filming and, and coordination. It's really, really appreciated. Absolutely would not happen without you. Oh, thank you, Angela. I love it. I'm glad I get to be a part of it. Me too. Me too. <laughs> and I'm glad you um, have uh, been able to be a part of the Brighter Day team. So am I. All right. Well, join us um, right here at this time, same time and same station um, each Sunday. Um, and especially uh, during this holiday season, wishing you um, the very best um, um, with your family and that you stay safe and warm. And until next time, have a brighter day.